when when he got in and got the folk on their way out, guess what? And how should I respond? As a parent, as adults here at the Southside Baptist Church, we have the opportunity. As you can see, it depends on whose hands is in. So put your concerns, put your worries, put your... Yeah. 
Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord. Your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord? A God feared in the counsel of the holy ones, great and awesome above all that are around him. O Lord God of hosts, who is as mighty as you, O Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. God is faithful. By him, you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us so that the word of the Lord may be spread rapidly and be glorified everywhere, just as it is among you, and that we may be rescued from wicked and evil people, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. All together, be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. This is the word of the Lord. Let us hear today and be saved. You may be seated at this time. Let's say amen for the praise team. Amen. As they come to bless us in their own way. Praise the Lord.
moment just, just close our eyes and uh, go to the Lord in silence. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, Brother Judge, I have, I have a, uh, a prayer request. This lift up uh, uh, Janet's uncle uh, has a bunch of health issues, and we were just told yesterday that he's going to the hospice. Mm -hmm. So we keep uh, in, uh, our family in prayer and keep uh, the Upshaw family in prayer. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Okay, let's just clear our minds and open our hearts to our Heavenly Father. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, for your many blessings, dear Lord. Thanking you for being the loving and caring God that you are. Lord, we just can't thank you enough for all you've done and all you're doing and all you're going to do, Heavenly Father. And we just give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise, dear Lord, and we lift your name on high because you are worthy, Father, we thank you. We just can't thank you enough, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, for, for the praises this morning, Heavenly Father, for those who, who just uh, experience your goodness, dear Lord, each and every day, each and every one of us, Heavenly Father, when we open our eyes in the morning and see that we can see, Lord, we just thank you, and we just love you, Heavenly Father. Lord, as we come this morning, we just want to say, Lord, uh, lift up the Upshaw family, Heavenly Father. Uh, the Fields family, dear Lord, right now, uh, as their loved one has gone into uh, a situation that uh, the doctor says hospice, dear Lord, but we know he's in your hands, Heavenly Father. Yes, and we just pray, dear Lord, that you do with this family, give them comfort and peace, knowing that you are in control, Heavenly Father, and that uh, your blessings never cease, and your mercies never cease. So let's just... Uh, just thank you, Heavenly Father, and just give them the comfort in knowing, dear Lord, who you are. And and Lord, we pray for 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 for, for the one who has been placed uh, who was saved in hospice, Heavenly Father. We pray, dear Lord, that you touch him, yes. Lord, and give him peace and give him comfort, Heavenly Father, and heal his illness, Heavenly Father, according to your will, Heavenly Father. Lord, for those concerns that were not voiced, Heavenly Father, we know that you know who they are. And you know what they are, dear Lord, and we just pray, dear Lord, that you take care of them according to their needs, Heavenly Father. Lord, um, again, we thank you for being the loving and caring God that you are. We pray, dear Lord, that that, um, that your blessings reach out, dear Lord, to this country, to the people that is in charge, Heavenly Father, for those, those who are leaders, dear Lord. We pray right now, dear Lord, that you give them the divine guidance they need. Dear Lord, to lift this country up in a way that it needs to go, to get closer to you and to bring us together, Heavenly Father. Lord, uh, we need your guidance, Heavenly Father. And dear Lord, again, we just thank you for being the loving and caring God that you are. We thank you, dear Lord, for each and every one that is here today. And we pray that you just bless each and every family, Heavenly Father. Those that are on media, Heavenly Father, bless each and every one of them and their families, Heavenly Father. Lord, give us this day. Our daily prayer to Heavenly Father. Yes. Your many blessings and your love and your care. Lord, we thank you, we love you, we praise you. And we say, Heavenly Father, again, that uh, the God man who will bring the word to us today, dear Lord, that it, that it opens our hearts, that, it, that, it, that, it, that we receive it, Heavenly Father, in a way that will just uh, glorify you, Heavenly Father, and uh, just uh, elevate our spirits, dear Lord, and give us the resolve to continue to. Just to do the things that's pleasing to you, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Lord, thank you. And we pray that as your word reach out, dear Lord, that someone would hear and come to you, Heavenly Father, saying, Lord, forgive me for my sins, Heavenly Father. Yes. I'm yours, dear Lord. Lord, let them just come to you in peace and love according to your word. Lord, again, we love you, we praise you. And we ask all these blessings in the precious name of Jesus with thanksgiving that the church say, Amen. 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 And thank you, Deacon McClellan, for mm -hmm. leading us in our time of sharing and prayer. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, we are up now to the time in our worship where we recognize those who are guests worshiping with us for the very first time. I'm looking across, panning pews. If you are sharing with us today for the very first time, worshiping with us as a guest, if you would just raise your hand 
we would like to recognize you today. Amen. Okay, then as they say down south, we're all just one big happy family. Amen. 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 We're one big happy family. Since we're one big happy family, let me ask you to do this. If you did not take the time, go ahead and think one or two happy thoughts. Turn around and look at somebody and say good morning to them. Just go ahead. And Fictitious character of the deal to say good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. We are here and we are celebrating God's goodness. If He wasn't good to all of us, none of us would be here. And we thank and praise Him for that. We want to recognize those who have uh, recently are on on the way to completing another lap around the sun. You'll see their names listed in the bulletin uh, there on the back panel. We have uh, Brother Jimmy Spears getting ready to have a birthday. Sister Linda Dimpley is getting ready to have a birthday. Sister April Barton is getting ready to have a birthday. And Sister uh, Morgan Everett is about to have a birthday. And we know Brother and Sister Martin are getting ready to, uh-oh. <laughs> Celebrate another year of matrimony and conjugal bliss. We thank and praise the Lord for all of us. Let's sing a happy birthday and a happy anniversary. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Jackson, would you come now and lead us and give us our opportunities and our announcements? Let's say amen for her. She comes. Amen. church, followed by choir rehearsal at 10, and then Bible study at 11. And then on Sunday, the men will be singing. The youth reg retreat registration Amplify is open at this point, and if you are interested or want to know more information regarding the retreat, please see Deacon Hickman or myself. Then lastly, we want to save the date um, of March, May 11th, uh, 1245 to 3 p.m., that's the date of our Mother's Day and Women's Luncheon. So ladies, please mark that date on the calendar, and we hope to see you all there. These are the announcements that I have at this moment. Does anyone have anything else that needs to be added? Uh, Sister Jackson, there's one more announcement. Did I hear? Uh, no, you didn't. This, is, uh, this one came from Saturday. Oh, okay. So this past uh, Saturday, this past Saturday, uh, Sister Stanley, uh, Sister Denby, uh, Sister Price, who did I miss? Sister Karina uh, met together, and I just wanted to give the rest of the church the opportunity to participate in the preparations and plannings for our upcoming Vacation Bible School. 
Uh, so if you would, if you would have, if you have uh, one, the availability, two, the interest, if you would let Sister Stanley know that you are available to be a part of the preparation for the BBS um, today, uh, that would be very much appreciated. Sister, Sister Stanley, is there anything else I need to, needs to be added? Amen, amen. We need, <laughs> we need teachers, we need um, helpers, people who are um, blessed with being able to do crafts. Just let us know how you can help us with BBS this year. Amen, amen, that's it. Thank you all, have a blessed Sunday and, uh, and a great week. Amen. 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 Hey, uh, okay, Reverend, we're going to have to get Sister Lil on one of these here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm sorry, we do have one other announcement. I forgot. Uh, uh, Deacon Winfrey is coming at this time. Let's say amen for Deacon Winfrey. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. First, give an honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, uh, the goodness and mercy that he has restored on, on each of us. Each of us uh, if you recall, uh, two weeks ago, we, we voted uh, through the ballot to uh, call Reverend Williams as a, as a incoming pastor. Before I go there, let me just say a few things. Uh, I would like to thank the, the pulpit committee, search committee, if you will, for their commitment and their faithfulness uh, in the many I was a meeting and the amount of research work that they that they did. But I want to thank each one of you. Uh, so the deacons, thank you deacons, uh, who were very much involved in the process as well. And on several occasions they had the opportunity to meet with Reverend Williams. Thank you all, each one of you, for your vote. I thank you for your faithfulness and I thank you for your, for being a, a member of this body of believers. And last but not least, least I'd like to thank uh, Pastor Williams uh, for his faithfulness and his steadfastness during this time. I recall as we began the process, it was through your kindness that you uh, selected a pulpit committee to move forward. And it had been made known to us that Pastor Downs had uh, related to us that he was on the verge of retirement. We went about the mission of the transition from one pastor to another pastor. Uh, the mission has been completed. The task has been done. And according to our bylaws, 60% of the resident membership was required in order to call one. I am pleased to say that uh, we have exceeded the 60%. <laughs> and once again, I thank you for all that you've done. And may we continue to provide the support that he needs moving forward. Amen? Amen. Let's just let's keep our hearts 
and our minds as much as we can focus uh, to that end. Amen? Amen. We are laborers together uh, in the ministry, and it is, uh, it is to that end that we will continue uh, to try to serve. We're up now to the time where we do labor together as we worship together in our gifts and giving. Um, we are a church who cooperates together in partnership with uh, sister churches across South Jersey, across the state of Pennsylvania, and southern New Jersey to be a part of what it means to be a people on bold mission. Mm -hmm. And we go on bold mission, believe it or not, every day as we not only come together on Mondays to pray, not only as we go about in the variety of ways that we are uh, personally involved in, in ministry, but as we as a congregation share in our gifts, we support the work of missionaries all over this nation and around the world. And so as we give today, uh, be mindful that we are giving back a portion of what God has given us but that portion that we give is multiplied by the power of the Spirit and literally touches lives all over the planet with the gospel. I'm going to ask as we prepare to go forward in our worship and giving, if our own deacon field would lift our prayer and ask the Lord to bless us as we share. Father God, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done, Lord. At this time, we miss the time we Take our gifts that we bring to the storehouse, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, that you just bless our gifts, Lord, and that you just multiply it as far as we go, Lord. Yes. That it can be a blessing to those many who may need me, Lord. Lord, we love you, we pray for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We are in the hands of our deacons and our ushers. <laughs>
to you as we see, as we hear what you are saying to us according to the scriptures by the power of the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, we, we want to trust you. We want to yield to you. We want to obey you. And so we invite you, Lord, to have your way uh, in this time. Uh, we'll be careful, Lord, to give you all the praise, to give you all the glory. We ask only that in these moments you will speak a word to us that will help us to be like Jesus. For it is in his name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. First in reverence to the spirit of Christ in whom we do move and have our being. And then with great appreciation to see Pastor Emeritus Rev. Landa Downs in this space. Amen. 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 It's good to see you, Pastor. Amen. To all of our deacons, to all of our trustees, to all who lead the ministries of our church to help us to be a people uh, both on both mission, to the rank and file family, which is Southside, those who are guests sharing in our worship today, certainly to those who are digitally connecting with us via YouTube, and to all uh, who are part of what it means to share in this experience. We say to you, grace and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Yes, sir. And it is indeed very uh, sacred privilege and trust to stand behind this desk. I uh, <clears throat> want to try and preach, <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm full. And uh, so if you will pray for me uh, as we as we walk through this this message. There are there are some house cleaning matters that I need to attend to on the way to the message. You see there on the uh, screen. Hopefully you're able to discern that that is the image which was on the front of our first Sunday bulletin for the month of March. And I, I made some assumptions. And I don't want to do that. There's an axiom and a little eight, uh, and an adage that goes with what happens when you assume. And that shouldn't happen in the house of the Lord. Amen. March is Women's History Month. Yeah. And that image uh, is selected specifically to commemorate and affirm, as we come to First Sunday, Women's History Month, in that it depicts the activity we find in the Gospel of John, chapter 13. John chapter 13, verses 1 through 10, those who read it, that's not what I'm going to preach today. Um, but I just want to reference it so that you know what was, what was intended on first Sunday, because we're still in Women's History Month. So that, that picture, that depiction, is of what happened on the day when Jesus shared his last meal with his disciples. You will notice, hopefully, uh, when you get a chance, if you don't throw them away, these make great invitations. You can just put, put a little something on the back, uh, write someone's address that you didn't get to see in service, and mail them the bulletin. Um, and then they can see what happened in worship. And if nothing else, they can at least benefit from uh, the picture, which hopefully you can share. This one that's in the, the current bulletin, we'll talk about hopefully at another juncture point. But I want to make a couple points about that one because the artist who rendered it had an intent behind the way they rendered Jesus washing feet. Now, uh, we do recognize in our tradition of Christian uh, discipleship two ordinances. Uh, the baptism, mm -hmm. which happens right behind me and behind that screen, there is a pool. And we there celebrate what it means to identify with the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ as the source of our salvation and our new identity in Christ. Baptism is the first of our ordinances which we regularly observe. The second is at this table, which is in front of the pulpit. That is the Lord's table, where we again identify with the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus, which establishes the new covenant um, basing uh, our identity in the finished work of Jesus Christ once and for all to satisfy the justice of God against sin, disobedience, and rebellion. Mm -hmm. But in certain traditions, there is another observance, and that is foot washing. Foot washing is to commemorate what we find in John chapter 13, where Jesus uh, loving his disciples to the fullest extent. If you read several Greek translations, he took off whatever, or he put on, we don't know if he took off, but we know he put on himself a towel, and he began to wash the feet of his disciples. 
Now, what's significant about that image in rendering that activity, which we know happened because it's in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, is this. Jesus is washing the feet of one of the women who was one of his followers. That missed somebody. That missed somebody. That, that the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is washing the feet of a woman. Somebody didn't catch that again. I said the picture depicts Jesus in John 13 washing the, 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 the feet of his disciples and the particular set of feet that are being washed in that picture are the feet of a woman who followed Jesus. I need us to appreciate that in Women's History Month. Because we live in a culture which actually does have caste, not only on the basis of color, but it has caste on the basis of gender. And John would help us to understand in his uh, description that Jesus washed all of his disciples' feet who were there to eat. And this artist wanted to help us to appreciate that it wasn't a men's only experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I hope that as we celebrate Women's History Month, that we appreciate the fact that God in Jesus loves not only the men who follow him, but God in Jesus loves the women who follow him too. Amen. And if you look in the picture, you have the bulletin. There's a couple of extras somewhere. Uh, if you just want to share one or take a look at one again, You'll see that there's not just one sister in the line, there's several sisters in that line <laughs> getting their feet washed along with several of the men. And I think that is an exciting thing about our gospel. Our gospel is inclusive. In fact, among monotheistic expressions of faith, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the most radical in the way it affirms not just men, but also women as vessels that can indeed uh, answered the full call of God on their lives, uh, despite what several of our traditions uh, and man-made institutions may say. So we celebrate that, and I just wanted to make sure I put that out there for Women's History Month as we get ready to go forward. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, if you brought your Bible, I want to invite you to look with me in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, Luke chapter 3, and in the interest of time, I'm going to hunt some verses uh, off. I, I was going to, believe it or not, I was going to uh, read all of the verses, 23 through 38. And when you look at that, you might chuckle. Um, Luke chapter 3, verses 23 through 28. We won't read all of those verses. But we will reference some things about them. Luke chapter 3, I'm going to read verse 23, and then I will read verse 38. Reading from the King James Version, Luke chapter 3, verse 23, it reads like this. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. Skip down to verse 38. Which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of of Adam, which was the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Let us hear today and be saved. For just a few moments, I want to share from this passage of Scripture from the subject, Saving the Family. Saving the Family. We've been walking through the Gospel of Luke. Luke is meticulous in his Gospel to affirm uh, in great detail all of the matters which are commonly believed and affirmed in the New Testament church. He has in mind that we might understand very clearly uh, with full confidence what it is that Christians who have followed Jesus are certain to be the case. Yeah. Here he comes to the family line of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, some of you will remember a few years ago, uh, a man by the name of Spielberg put together a movie called Saving Private Ryan. 
the movie was actually based on a factual set of occurrences. There was a family where uh, four children, four young men, were actually a part of the military and were in various parts of, of assignment in uh, various branches of the military, and uh, several of them had lost their lives. Mm -hmm. In fact, the story is actually true to form in that this woman, the mother, got the news of all three of her children, well, three of her four boys, having passed. Um, when the mission came to be to save the last one. Now, uh, I reference that for this reason. Uh, the, the, the passage that we are looking at, and we are not going to exhaustively, definitively walk through all of those people, um, but the passage references the family line of Jesus Christ. It is a genealogy. It intends to establish, if you will, the full line of Jesus Christ so that we might understand who his people are. Who are his people? Who is his family? Uh, out, of, out of what lineage does Jesus walk into the pages of human history? This is important uh, for a couple reasons. For the sake of salvation, the most important of them is this. He is legitimately qualified to be the Messiah. Yeah. That's the most important thing to gather as we walk through these genealogies. The, the Gospel of Luke records one genealogy, which, as you just heard in verse number 38, goes all the way back to Adam. But there is another genealogy that is found in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew only goes back to Abraham. We'll talk about that some more in just a little while. Suffice it, however, to say that what we are looking at here is some very important information concerning the legitimacy of Jesus Christ to be the Messiah of the world. Now, I want you to know that Jesus Christ came to save his family. <laughs> he came to save the human family. He came that all of those who were a part of the lineage, whether you're walking down the line through the Gospel of Matthew or here through the Gospel of Luke all the way back to Adam, might actually have access to the forgiveness of sins, yeah. might have access to the adoption as sons and daughters of God, and on the basis of that, might actually have legitimate access to be called not only sons and daughters, but heirs and joint heirs and citizens of the kingdom of God. Amen. This is significant as we walk through the scriptures. Jesus is about the task of providing salvation for those who are in his family. I mark this for this reason. John the Baptist said something about Jesus in his first coming, which is often uh, glossed over. John said that when Jesus came the first time, he was ready to judge. Did you hear that? Yeah. It's, it's in the Bible. Go back with me, Luke chapter 3. Very quickly, I want you to notice, this is what John said concerning Jesus. Jesus is what he said. He says there, John chapter, uh, Luke chapter 3, uh, John answered saying, verse 16, unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Verse 17. Listen, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner. Did you read that? Well, look at that. Verse 17. But the chafe he will burn with fire and principle. John says that Jesus came ready to do some wrecking. And we have evidence of the fact that on several occasions, Jesus, as he encountered specific experiences, would challenge with chiding and chastising words. He had hard words to say for the religious people of his day. There was one occasion when he was walking past a fig tree, and he had some hard words for the fig tree. He said, by now there should be some fruit here, but there's nothing to eat. And so he had some hard words. My point is this. When Jesus came 
on his first advent, John makes it plain for us to appreciate that he came ready to judge, but had he judged? Let's be clear. If Jesus on his first tour of duty had judged humankind, nobody would make it in. If he came on the, 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 the time when we sing the old little, uh, little town of Bethlehem and came in the might of his authority, nobody would make it in. All of us would have been found unworthy. And so when he came the first time, he came to provide salvation for his family. He came to satisfy the promises which had been spoken about him from the beginning of the book of Genesis all the way down through the rest of the Old Testament oracles. Let me get back in the passage. Now, note there, he says, Jesus was about the age of 30, verse 23, and as it was supposed, there is verse, 30, uh, verse 23, uh, he was supposed to have been the son of Joseph, but he was actually connected to his heavenly father. All right. That's verse 38. Now, let me move into some points here I want to make. Jesus, in the previous passages that we looked at, has already been to the pool. We know that Luke records that Jesus was one of the last of the folks who uh, John the Baptist baptized. I had the opportunity uh, to serve as an interim in a Filipino church uh, in Upper Darby. And their custom was once a year, they would gather everyone who was ready to be baptized, take them down to a pool, and baptize them once a year. So if you missed the baptism, you had to wait till next year. <laughs> but this is the point. Uh, um, at, at one particular point in this particular congregation, uh, they had the baptism, and I will never forget, we had planned uh, to baptize uh, Pastor Downs 19 people. That was what the list had. I had 19 people who were supposed to get baptized. But, but what happened was, as as they had invited their friends. And so they had invited family and friends to come watch them. And as their family and friends heard them share their testimonies, this is no hyperbole, several of them took off their shirt and had a t-shirt and some shorts on and said, I want to get baptized too. Amen. That day I thought we were going to baptize 19, we baptized 30 people. Amen. Because the power of a testimony yeah. of someone who identifies with Jesus has Substantial capital. Now, Jesus, when he baptized, we reference this by way of review very quickly. Jesus, when he was baptized, was being baptized for reasons which are distinct from how and why you and I get baptized. When you and I get baptized, we are being baptized in identification with his death. We are, we are identifying with the fact that when he died, his death was sufficient. But when Jesus died, when, when, sorry, when Jesus was baptized, Jesus' baptism, number one, was to identify in submission to the will of his heavenly Father. When he put himself in the pool, Jesus was saying, I am here to do the bidding of my heavenly Father. Amen. That's number one. But number two, when Jesus went down in the pool, he went down in the pool not only to identify with his heavenly Father, but to also identify in sacrificial solidarity with the waywardness of the entire human family. Wow. Do you understand, my brothers and sisters, that he went down to say, yes, yes, Heavenly Father, I am here to do your will. But when he went down, he went down to say, yes, my broken brother and my broken sister, I am here to take your penalty and to take your punishment. And so when Jesus goes down in the pool, he goes down, and the scripture says that when he came up, his heavenly father said, this is my boy. And I'm proud of him. Now that frames for us what I want to talk about concerning his mission to save the family. Now I understand that in the world we live in, we like to think that there are several races. And I came to challenge that today in Jesus' name. That there is only one race, and it's the human race. I'm going to say it again. There's only one race. You, you, homo sapiens sapiens. 
And, and this passage makes that plain. I mean, no disrespect to all of the folks who have Bible knowledge is way beyond my capacities. But there are several who would like to theorize that somehow or another that there are multiple Genesis stories. That there's a Genesis story for one group of quote unquote homo, uh, humanoids and a, another Genesis story for another group of humanoids. And, and they all kind of look alike, but they're different. And that's not what this Bible tells us. This Bible tells us that God made all humans from one clot of blood. And so when Jesus gets in the pool, he gets in the pool in the behalf of his heavenly father's will and in behalf of the waywardness, waywardness of the entire human family. Amen. Now, let me hurry because I want to finish some things. Uh, Matthew records concerning the family tree of Jesus. He frames his lineage and he goes back to Abraham. This is found in Matthew chapter 3 or Matthew chapter 1. And you'll find there that he helps us to understand that Jesus ultimately in talking about him in light of Abraham is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. I don't have a whole bunch of time. I'm trying to hunk it off. But I'm trying to help you to understand that uh, when Matthew has his framing about the genealogy of Jesus, he wants those who are in his audience to appreciate that Jesus comes to save the family that's connected with Abraham. Why is this important? It's important because Abraham is the father of all who are walking by faith. Somebody needs to hear this. I was talking to a group of college students just, just the other day, and, and we were having a discussion about Galatians chapter 3 and, and chapter 4. And if you'll read it on your own time, you will find that, that the apostle is dealing with a problem that we still face today. What do you do with the law when you have Jesus Christ instead? This is the challenge for several of us. Several of us do not know how to deal with walking by grace in light of the schoolmaster of the law. On, and, and, and the apostle says this. He says it. He says, look, I had to deal with Peter. Uh, because when Peter was there with those who were Judaizers, they checked the brother's faith. He started acting like a Jew instead of acting like a follower of Jesus. And he was creating confusion. He says, listen. Uh, God spoke to Abraham before he spoke to Moses. <laughs> yes, sir. So the promise is preeminent. And going back to Abraham says that when Jesus died, he finished the work that was tested in Abraham in Genesis 22. I don't have a lot of time. I'm sorry. I got less time than I thought I would have to finish this message. But if you read the story of Genesis 22, you will remember that at that point, God tested Abraham. And he told Abraham, he said, Abraham, uh, do you love me, brother? Well, then here's what I need you to do. Take your boy, your only boy, and take him up on, on a hill and offer him up uh, and sacrifice him. And you know the story. Abraham got ready to do it. And the Lord stopped him and said, now I know that you genuinely trust me. And there's a ram in the bush. Jesus comes to be that ram Amen. in the bush. Amen. He comes to be the one who satisfies the full statement of faithfulness in God's behalf concerning the need for atonement. Let me hurry. But this is what we want to spend some time, and that is the family tree as it relates to Luke's record. Luke records and frames his lineage all the way back to Adam. And in so doing, he helps us to appreciate that Jesus is the second Adam. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean? That means that whatever the first Adam messed up, the second Adam fixed. Amen. The first Adam messed up a whole bunch. If you're a man, you, you know that the Bible says that it's hard on brothers because of the first Adam. If you're a sister, you know that the Bible says it's hard on sisters because of the first Eve. So Jesus Christ comes and he is the second Adam. His death, therefore, atones the sins of all who partake in the nature of Adam, and we all do, and his fall with its consequences. His death, therefore, completes what was promised.
promised initially to Adam and Eve in Genesis 3.15. I don't have time to look. I hope you can find it on your own. When you get there, you will find God makes a promise to Adam and Eve. He says, he says, he says, the serpent is going to bruise his heel. He said, but, but he, the seed of a woman, will bruise his head. In other words, God makes a promise there concerning Jesus Christ as the second Adam that he will crush everything that was a consequence of the fall and he will provide a way past disobedience uh, through his shed blood. Amen. He is, therefore, the seed. You see, he's the seed of a woman. Now, Every time we would walk through all of these, but I decided to select a few of the special people in the family of Jesus that needed Jesus to show up. Uh, one of them is Judah. It's an interesting story. Uh, there were 12 sons. Yeah. Judah had 12. Uh, sorry, uh, Jacob had 12. One of them was Judah. And the reality <laughs> is that Judah of the 12 is the one through whom God is ultimately going to send the Savior. Here's the problem. Judah doesn't have character. <laughs> he, has, he has great, he has a great promise over him, but he has very little character in him. God intends to bless the entire world through the line of Judah. But you know, if you read Genesis chapter 37, verses 25 through 28, Judah is the one who came up with the great idea. Let's sell Joseph. <laughs> Judah is the one who, because of how perhaps Joseph uh, brandished the things that were a part of his dream. Brothers, I saw y'all bowing down to me and worshiping and, and celebrating me. Maybe I don't know. But, but we do know that there was something in the character of Judah that caused him to have what we would today call hateration. Uh, concerning what God was going to do in that season with Joseph. Now, I, I want to put this on for practical application, if I can hump that off quickly and do it. Uh, you, you, you understand that Judah has the seed in his life. God is going to send the Savior through Judah. Joseph had a dream, but Judah had a seed. Joseph had a dream. And it was a great dream. But Judah had the seed. You understand the contrast, don't you? Now, 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 you and I are going to encounter some people who have profound potential for the here and the now. But, but do not allow anything about that to cause you to shrink in your understanding and appreciation of what uniquely is in you from God. Wow. Judah had a seed. Yeah. Joseph had a dream. Someone looking at me, I need you to appreciate that God has posited in you a seed. Amen. You don't have to worry about anybody's dream. Amen. The destiny that is yours, the design that is divinely, uniquely yours, can't be taken from you. And your character can rest in that yeah. and be enriched by it. Judah is a special brother. But not only Judah, y'all know David was special, don't you? The Bible says that on several occasions, God had all kinds of glowing things to say about, G about David. On one occasion, David is called the friend of God. On another occasion, David is called a man after God's own heart. Uh, you read the stories, David was so awesome that people wrote songs about the brother. They, they said Saul has killed a, a thousand or so. But David, David has killed tens of thousands. The brother had lots of potential, but he was a special brother. Now, there, 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 there are some stories about him. He, he would praise himself out his clothes. <laughs> but then there's another side to David. We read that David actually had a brother killed yeah. to try and cover up his mess. We read in another setting that David, because of how things looked around him, decided that rather than count on God, he would count the people. And so David was a special type of brother. But that's not all. Solomon was a special type of brother. Solomon, according to the scriptures, there was none wiser than Solomon in the whole history of the world. Yeah. And yet when you read, Solomon overturned justice 
because of his connection to things and to women. Scripture says that they turned his heart against God and he began to actually put different things on the same level with God. I don't have time to deal with it, but my point here is this. Jesus came because he had some people in his family with issues. I'm looking at somebody right now and maybe your family has some people with issues. And I don't mean to be messy because I'm not going to meddle. I'm not going to meddle. But maybe some of your people have some of the same issues of the special people that I'm talking about here. Well, I'm not talking about their special people. You read the text and you'll find that there's some extra people. You got some extra and you got some special. And some of you know you got some extra special people in your family situation. You read the scriptures. Genesis chapter 4, the Bible says that Lamech said this. He actually said, he said, if Cain is in trouble for what he did on this order, then I'm in trouble 70 times, 7 times for what I've done in, in the way of taking somebody's life. He was extra. My, my point is this. I don't know what Cain did to kill Abel. But Lamech is basically saying, whatever he did, ain't got nothing on what I did. I should I, I just busted hell all the way wide open the way I treated this little boy. It's in the scriptures. Yeah. My point is, it's extra. But that's not all. You read Abraham's story. I don't have time to hunk it off. But Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 10, God has a conversation with Abraham. I don't have the time, but I wish I did because Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 10, God is speaking to Abraham. And he's telling Abraham how he's going to bless him and how he's going to bless his seed and how he's going to bless the world through how he works with Abraham. Mm -hmm. All this is happening in verses 1 through 10. Mm -hmm. But then Abraham has to go to Egypt. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he said, you know, uh, Sarah, you're kind of fine. <laughs> and if, 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 if we get down there in Egypt, people are going to try to beat me up for you. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. We're going to lie. <laughs> And say that you my sister. Because if they think I'm your husband, they're going to kill the brother. I wish I had time. Here's the point. When God sent Jesus Christ and he stopped by the pool, he was stopping by to identify with the will of his father. But he was stopping by to identify with the waywardness of you and me. Some of us are special in our waywardness. And some of us are extra in our waywardness. And some of us are extra special. And some of us are special and extra. Some of us are creative in how we just do what we do. But the good news, the good news of the gospel, the good news of the gospel is that Jesus comes to the human family to be the promised seed of a woman and Jesus comes as prophesied to be the second Adam. Yeah. Now, in coming as the seed of a woman, he is indeed a, a promised miracle. For you see, a woman doesn't have a seed. A man has a seed. A woman has an egg. But God described Jesus from the beginning as the seed of a woman. It's in your Bible, John chapter, Genesis chapter 3. He is the seed of a woman, which is because God needs to do something for humankind for which all that is necessary is an egg. A man's seed is the problem. The only thing that can fix it is the seed of the Holy Ghost. But he is also the second Adam. I got happy when I read that. Paul deals with this idea of the second Adam ex ex extensively. I, I do not have the time in the interest of our gathering today. But when you read about it, you will find that whatever it was that the first Adam messed up, the second Adam erased it yeah. and fixed it. Yeah. Now, I, I don't know if you've ever had uh, uh, the, 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 the experience of messing up something. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm the only one in the room who's messed up some stuff. 
But 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 what I, I what I what I get excited about in Jesus is that Jesus fixes what is messed up. Yeah. Yeah. He, he redeems the thing. He salvages the thing, and he restores the thing. He is the second Adam. Yeah. He he comes, and what Adam messed over, God through Jesus Christ cleans up. Yeah. God through Jesus Christ restores to its uh, original intent and. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Makes it something it could never have been. Wow. He is the second Adam. Well, I'm going to leave you alone. I don't know what your testimony is, but I heard the voice of Jesus say, uh. Come unto me and rest. Lay down thy head, O weary one. Lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was. Yeah. Weary, worn, and sad. Yeah. Found in him a resting place. And he has made me glad. I don't know what your family is like, but the good news of the gospel is that when God sent Jesus, Jesus came so that he might do second Adam, seed of a woman, work to fix broken families and homes. Yeah. Yeah. However broken and however bruised and however beat down your family situation may be, the invitation is to come to Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Find in him all that we need. Yeah. That our life might be cleansed. Mm -hmm. That we might indeed experience a renovation yes. and a restoration. Amen. Because he got in the pool. And as was supposed, he was the son of Joseph. But verse 38 says, he was indeed the son of God. Mm -hmm. Our gospel is to the human family. Whether you dark chocolate like me, <laughs> caramel like some of you folk in here, <laughs> yellow, <laughs> red, white, pink, pick your color. Somebody said, I'm a rainbow. <laughs> Be the rainbow. <laughs> the gospel is for you too. Amen. 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 Yes, Amen. Amen. That we might all experience wholeness and healing and be made new. Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. Father, we thank you for the story of Jesus and his family. We acknowledge that we are part of that family and that we need you to be our Savior who heals brokenness, who cleanses waywardness and wickedness, forgives sin, and causes us to be reconciled to the Heavenly Father a brother or a sister in Christ, an heir, a joint heir with Jesus, a citizen of the kingdom because of his work on the cross. Help us to respond to Jesus Christ, the seed of the woman, Jesus Christ, the second Adam, Jesus Christ, the savior of the world, and say yes as you are speaking to us today. This we pray in Jesus' name. We're going to stand and sing our hymn of invitation in just a moment. If you are here in this space, in this sanctuary, and you need to trust Christ as Lord and Savior, perhaps you have not yet been baptized. You have not identified your life with his death. You have not identified your brokenness with his blood. If that is your situation, we invite you to trust Christ as Lord and Savior today. As a candidate of baptism, come and profess your confidence in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you're here and you do not have a local church home, we invite you to unite yourself with the Southside Church. And if you're here and you are in Christ, you are in a church, but you need special prayer while we're singing, we invite you to come. We're going to stand and sing our hymn of invitation, 489 in the Burgundy Hymn Book. Lord, I want to be a Christian. We'll sing verse 1 and 4. While we're singing, we invite you to come. Lord, I want to be a Christian.
Amen. We are now to the time where we close our formal time of invitation. If you have a matter that you needed to deal with and were reluctant to, we invite you before you leave, see myself, see Pastor Martin, see one of our deacons. We have several who are part of our teaching ministry who would be more than glad to help you to walk through, think through, talk about, and pray through whatever it is that needs to be addressed. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're about to leave and dismiss after the benediction. I want to remind you that when we leave here, you are going to be going into the greatest mission field where all of the families are broken. All of the families have some extra people. All of the families have some special people. And God has already connected you with some extra special people that he wants you to be a blessing to with your testimony, with the good news of how God has helped your family and helped you, you too can be a blessing to somebody else. Amen? Amen. And so let's be mindful of those opportunities to be bold when we're on mission, to be ready when we have opportunity to just say a word about who God is to us, what God has done for us, and how God even now is yet healing and making us new. You will leave the results to God and be sure that God will get glory and you're going to feel good about yourself for letting the Lord use you just in that very specific situation and time. If all hearts and minds are clear, let us prepare to look to the Lord for our final benediction. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come right now thanking you for this time that we've had just to come together and celebrate you. Fellowship together and to enjoy songs of praise and pilgrimage together, to be reminded of who you are and to, Lord, allow the story of Jesus engaging our family be a part of our testimony and a part of our legacy. Help us as we go forward this week to be mindful of the special people and the extra people that you want us to share our lives with that others might know that you are still healing and forgiving and making all things new. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now unto him who is able to present us before his presence with exceeding, exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And all of God's people said amen. Let the joy say amen. Oh.